<laughs> well, to celebrate its 2023 centennial, Liberty Station has unveiled two free art exhibits. Allie Wagner's live at Liberty Station. With more details, she joins us now. Hey, Allie. Yeah, and guys, this is so cool, so moving. You're going to want to stay tuned for this because we have both the artists here this morning. And Lori, I'm going to start with you. What is this? How can people come and check it out? Well, this is our centennial year for Liberty Station as the former Naval Training Center. So what we've been doing is one month each we take different situations. So the month of February we're celebrating, and this will be up all year, so it's not just that month, but we're celebrating these two artists who have very military-oriented but very touching and moving art. And so how can people come? It's free for people to come and check out, right? It is free. It's in the command center right here at Liberty Station. That's 2640 Historic Decatur. It is open from 8 to 7 each day, except for Sunday where it's open from uh, noon to uh, 5. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come and see Joe over here first, because when you walk in here, I feel like you are walking in to history. Joe, good morning. Hi. Okay, Hi, Joe, visit. With the, say your last name for me. Frangiosa. Frangiosa. So first of all, tell me about your service in the military. Well, I started out in the Navy and retired from the Marines. Uh, it was a very uh, extremely exciting career as a helicopter crew chief in the Marines. And in the Navy, I launched aircraft off aircraft carriers, Theodore Roosevelt in particular. Oh, wow. Okay. So tell me about this project that you have in here, because we're going through nautical history here. And talk a little bit about what we are seeing as people come in here. Well, I call it a glimpse of the U.S. Navy and Marines from 1775 to 1945. It's, it's a fun glimpse. I make the models you see in the booth, and then I've, over a long period of time, I've collected artifacts to go with the period of the model I made. And now it's set up in a timeline all uh, seamlessly through the room up to 1945. And in each booth, you're going to see the model, of course, to see how ships evolved. And then I surrounded it with real pieces of Navy artifacts, which is hard to find. Yeah. And then advertising and toys from the period. It's it's really interesting when you when you go down the different rabbit holes. Wow, because some of the things that I've seen in here, like we were talking about, I mean, you're talking about hats. I mean, you're really getting a glimpse into the past as you walk in here. How they lived on board. Yeah. That's uh, there's not a reference to the wars in here it's or even particular people it's just what was what was the feeling for the crew on board and then with the cutaway models i make you get to see inside what it may have been like according from photographs and drawings yeah um it's called storyboarding and uh, on on this other wall here is my workshop area where i'm making a model what just simply uh as people come in i'm keeping busy while waiting for people to come in and they get to see how the other models were made. Um, how long does that take you? <laughs> this well, is like, how long does that, this is a huge model. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, uh, I've been, I did it for hire in the past before yeah. I put it all on a display. So uh, I do it fairly quickly now because I'm ahead of it. Yeah. I have my techniques, but it would normally take many, many months or even a year for something like this. Wow. But nowadays, uh, uh, it takes me longer to collect the the visual uh, uh, archives and uh, collect the pieces to build it then then to actually sit down and build it because the like in this one uh, all the guns and all the metal work is jewelry pieces from Hobby Lobby and Michaels and uh, Home Depot is, is I, I kind of it's called repurposing yeah so I'll repurpose I'll uh, look at a photograph for drawing that's the one i'm using for this and then many other images um and i just try and capture that in in, in the finished that is beautiful so this is one aspect that you yes. can come and check out and now i'm going to come over here to see joe paisano who uh got all dressed up this morning and joe good morning to good you good morning good morning how are you so tell me a little bit because you this area you have 
twofold here. You have a few different things that you're showing. So let's start, first of all, with these walls here and the names on the walls and what this means. Absolutely. So you're looking at the corrugated memorial wall. It's um, comprised of both the um, Vietnam Memorial Wall that's in D.C. with about 17,000 names. And the other side is the Freedom Wall, which has about 3,800 gold stars. And, and I mean, this is, you're talking about the kids who worked on these stars. You have many veterans who have gone and picked stars Correct. here. And, and just the impact that that has. Yes. Yeah, so um, talking about the children. So um, the gold stars are actually painted by about 1,500 children internationally, both um, East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, South America, Mexico, and Italy. And they were able to paint gold stars and then get them back to me to make the uh, Freedom Wall. And talk because we also see these beautiful pieces of work on the wall here. And take me through what these are representing. Absolutely. So the one we're standing in front of is called Welcome Home. It's for our Vietnam veterans um, and their family. Um, there's actually 125 missing uh, screws that represent the 1,250 missing in action. If we get a name or remains from that missing in action, I'm actually going to reach out to the family first so they can install the screw to bring their uh, soldier home. Yeah, and, and something else, I wanted to talk about this piece down here because a lot of us here in San Diego knew many of the veterans uh, who worked on this piece, on this World War II yes. panel. This is a special piece, so this is our World War II um, panel, and it's called Iwo for Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. So Pacific Front, European Front, real easy to um, depict the Pacific Front. How do I get the European Front? So Tom Rice... Um, actually installed the first 101 screws to honor the 101st Airborne that dropped in Normandy uh, on D-Day, along with him. Talk about your service and what brought you to wanting to create these pieces of art. So I, I'm a, a Navy Chief Reservist. Um, I've been in for 22 and a half years. And my actual footprint that I want to leave with the military is my artwork, so that when people see this, they'll go, oh, you're the chief that made the war memorial. Yeah, I mean, these panels are breathtaking. They all have a story behind them. It is about bringing the oral history to life is what you and I talked about. Yes, yes. Um, every panel has a story, multiple stories. Um, so this one is very near and dear because of the, the veterans that were part of it. Tom Crosby, who was a eight-year-old POW in the Philippines in World War II, actually installed the last 37 screws to represent the 37 months that he was interned with his family. The 1st Cavalry, with about 200 soldiers, actually liber or liberated them um, before execution. So it was a very moving, very moving piece for us. Oh, there are so many guys you could just walk through here. It's really incredible to hear the stories. And once again, you can come check these out for free. They are up, part of celebrating the centennial here at Liberty Station. We'll send things back over to you. He is so talented, Ali. Yeah, his, so his work is just impressive. I mean, how do you take that vision and make it I told it you, you guys were in for a treat. Yes. Yeah. Well, I remember yeah. the dog tag one that he did. I, I believe he was here for that. Yes. Um, and, yeah, we didn't really yeah. talk about that one, but it, it's such a cool concept. The materials that he uses, really. Yes. Really stunning. Truly. Truly. Wow. Bravo. Yes. Bravo. Our Standing ovation without getting to up. the mm -hmm. artist. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. We'll have to go right. we'll have to go check that out at Liberty mm -hmm. Station.